that the two most common reasons for the punishment in the graves are because of the negligence of letting the impurities fall on the clothes that we wear and on our body while performing taharat and because of backbiting as mentioned in sahih al bukhari hadith number 6055 many ignorant muslims especially of our times and more often the muslim youth both the boys and the girls simply standing under the shower taking a bath with shampoo shower gel or soap think that they have completed the major taharat that is ghusl required by islam this is absolute ignorance and terribly dangerous because without the islamic methods of performing the major taharat that is ghusl no salah is accepted and it can negatively impact on many other ibadat of islam and if a muslim dies in this state then that muslim died in a state of no taharat there are three basic steps to perform the major taharat that is ghusl required by islam which becomes obligatory upon an adult muslim man and an adult muslim woman when they see our dream when they indulge in a sexual intercourse when they indulge in any other method to fulfill their libido and for the women it is even after the completion of their menstrual cycle or post partum bleeding respectively before making wudu or ghusl it is compulsory to say bismillah according to sunan abu daud hadith number 101 prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have strictly forbidden to touch the private parts with the right hand at the time of performing taharat ghusl or otherwise as mentioned in sahih al bukhari hadith number 5630 la ilaha illallah la ilaha assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i am sima hussain siddiqui the eldest son of brother imran as he is popularly known to all of you inshallah i shall introduce and then invite my younger brother for his brief islamic talk sinan hussain siddiqui is the second son of brother imran and is my younger brother he is academically studying in 10th grade as a sophomore currently at a school here in the usa brother sinan has been a studious child since birth and takes serious interest in all academics whether in school or islamic public talks on few occasions brother sinan has given the friday sermon and led the friday salat including one at this same masjid of displains on november 24 2023 friday while his younger brother soban called the azan here this was in the absence of brother imran and me as we were in new york for our talks then brother sinan while in india was a regular public speaker of the sunday sessions at the iref islamic research and educational foundation of hyderabad city in india brother sinan at very young age of 11 years and while studying in 6th grade while in india participated participated in the rigorous 21 days dawa training program where male and female participants were trained to become islamic and motivational speakers in the likes of sheikh ahmed didat rahima allah brother imran and sister amtul mateen i now invite my younger brother sinan hussain siddiqui a sophomore currently at a school here in the usa to give a talk on the topic concept of taharat in islam sinan hussain siddiqui alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala rasulih al karim wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajmain a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim inna allaha yuhibbu tawwabina wa yuhibbul mutatahhirin amma ba'd rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul ughdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli i welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh meaning may the peace 
mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Inshallah, the topic of my talk is concept of taharat in Islam. Taharat is a very popular terminology amongst all the Muslims of the world. And Islamically, it is one of the most important requirement for every individual Muslim from the time of their respective adulthood till the time they reach their graves. Taharat is an Arabic word derived from the root word tuhar from three Arabic letters ta, ha and ra. And tuhar basically means to purify by cleansing. This word tuhar appears in the glorious Quran at least 31 times and is used as the root for 10 different Arabic words and all of them are related to purification by cleansing. Islam lays an immense importance on maintaining taharat all the time and teaches Muslim men and women specific methods of ceremonial purity to be maintained after natural or biological needs like after attending minor or major call of nature or after attaining sexual pleasure by the Islamically permitted methods or after waking up from a wet dream and for the women it is after the completion of their menstrual cycle or postpartum bleeding respectively. Let me now explain all of you when and how a Muslim man and a Muslim woman needs to maintain taharat that is needs to keep their bodies purified by cleansing respectively. In Islam, clean water is the most important source used for cleaning the body for purification. Next to the water, the main source of taharat in Islam is dry mud in the form of brick broken into small pieces. And in our times, we can also include paper napkins or tissue papers, like most of the toilets that the western countries have for use. In absence of all these, Islam allows you to use any other source that can completely dry the urine drops or any other impurity attached to our bodies after fulfilling natural or biological needs. But let me be very clear to all of you that using any other source for taharat except water is only when you have put all your efforts to find water even if it requires you to purchase water as may be the case most of the times living in the western countries. It is only when you have put all your efforts to find water and have failed to find water then that you can use the secondary sources for taharat. All Muslims very well know that the five times daily obligatory and canonical worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Ayat number 130 is not accepted by Allah unless prior to performing Salah, the Muslim man or the Muslim woman have performed Wazu that is ablution which is a compulsory prerequisite for Salah as mentioned in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayat number 6. Similarly, the wazu of any Muslim man and a Muslim woman is not valid unless and until he or she have maintained taharat as taught by Islam and mentioned in Sahih al-Muslim hadith number 433. This itself makes it very clear how important maintaining taharat is. Let me also inform all of you that Islam does not merely emphasize on cleaning the body after natural impurities. But rather, Islam even teaches strict precautions to be maintained while performing minor or major call of nature or any other biological need such that no stains of impurity fall on the clothes that we wear. Beloved Prophet Muhammad said that the two most common reasons for the punishment in the graves are because of the negligence of letting the impurities fall on the clothes that we wear and on our body while performing taharat and because of backbiting. As mentioned 
in Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 6055. Taharat in Islam are basically of two types. The minor taharat and the major taharat. Let me now explain all of you in brief the minor taharat. Whenever a Muslim man or a Muslim woman attends the call of nature, that is either urinating or defecating, that is in slang usage known as pooping, it is compulsory to clean the private part and its surrounding and the anus and its surrounding with clean water, making sure to the best of their ability that no stains of impurity are left behind. This is basically the minor taharat. Without this, the wazu is invalid. As mentioned in Sahih al-Muslim, hadith number 433. And without wazu, the salah is invalid. As mentioned in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, ayat number 6. And in Surah Nabu Dawood, hadith number 101. Let me now explain all of you in brief the major taharat. The technical word for major taharat in Islam is ghusl. There are certain teachings to perform the ghusl without which the ghusl is invalid and without ghusl the salah is invalid. Many ignorant Muslims, especially of our times and more often the Muslim youth, both the boys and the girls, simply standing under the shower taking a bath with shampoo, shower gel or soap think that they have completed the major taharat that is ghusl required by Islam. This is absolute ignorance and terribly dangerous because without the Islamic methods of performing the major taharat that is ghusl, no salah is accepted and it can negatively impact on many other ibadat of Islam. And if a Muslim dies in this state, then that Muslim died in a state of no taharat. There are three basic steps to perform the major taharat that is ghusl required by Islam, which becomes obligatory upon an adult Muslim man and an adult Muslim woman. When they see our dream, when they indulge in a sexual intercourse, when they indulge in any other method to fulfill their libido. And for the women, it is even after the completion of their menstrual cycle or postpartum bleeding respectively. The three basic steps to perform the major taharat that is ghusl and become ceremonially pure according to Islam are the first step, clean all the area below the navel in such a manner that no stains of impurity are left to the best of your ability. The second step, make complete ablution except for washing the feet. The third step, bathe with water from head to the toe in such a manner that you first pour water three times over the right side of your head followed by three times over the left side of your head, then followed by three times over the right shoulder, followed by three times over the left shoulder and make sure that your complete body is wet. Then finally, move a little bit away from where you took this ceremonial bath and pour water three times over the right foot followed by three times over the left foot. These are the three basic steps to perform the major taharat that is ghusl and become ceremonially pure according to Islam. Before I end my talk, I would like to make two emphatic statements. The first one, before making wazu or ghusl, it is compulsory to say Bismillah according to Sunan Abu Dawood, Hadith number 101. Many people make a mistake of saying complete Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, but saying complete Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is the Sunnah before beginning to recite the Surah from its start. And saying only Bismillah is what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught before making Wazu, Ghusl, or before starting any work. The second point, this is something very important for all of you to remember that Prophet Muhammad wasallam have strictly forbidden to touch the private parts with the right hand at the time of performing taharat, ghusl or otherwise. As mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5630. My dear brothers and sisters, 
I would also like to inform all of you that for more details on Tahayat and Ghusl, kindly visit our website that is iref.foundation and scroll it down completely and click on the Prophet's way of ablution or else on YouTube type as Brother Imran on the topic Taharat and Ghusl to watch my father that is popularly, who is popularly known as Brother Imran's video in detail. This video has his lecture in both English and Urdu in the same session. This video is also uploaded on our official YouTube channel that is IREF videos. I would now like to end my talk by reciting and translating the last portion of Surah Bakhra, Surah number 2, Ayat number 222, with which I started my talk. Auzu billahi min shaitan rajim. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wa yuhibbu al mutatahirin. Meaning, most certainly, Allah loves those who keep repenting and those who keep themselves in a state of taharat that is keep themselves ceremonially pure under all conditions with this i would like to end my talk wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin allahu 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 allah allah